I'm at a gypsy. And now these lower riders that bust their ass, you're going to make more money if the sport grows because you're showing up for nothing anyway now. So don't hate that Ken Rocks and Eli Tomac and all those guys got to get paid because there is no gate without you. Yeah. And that was my point years ago to Kevin Windham and Ricky when they called me for advice on a union. Don't threaten to pull out of Anaheim a week before. That's a threat. You want to do this right? At the end of the year in May, you say you formed a union and you have the top 10 guys in the world that are exclusive to this Players Association. And then you go negotiate fair licensing, ticket percentage, uh, team deal, whatever you want to do as a union or as an association. But don't you dare. Th- they, they've put the sport on the map and they sold tickets to fans. You don't strike. Now you strike if in June they ignore you. Yeah, yeah. And in July, if they definitely ignore you. That's what happens in the NHL and the NBA. Anytime you see these strikes, just so we're all aware, that means shit went really bad because they're negotiating constantly. And I think if the if the athletes, the ones that, that are at the top guys, the others would follow. But if right now you saw the race this weekend, if Chase Sexton, Eli Tomac, Cooper Webb, Jet Lawrence, um, uh, Cam, you know, the top in the lights in the top in the, in the Supercross, Ken Roxon, Chase Sexton – said we formed a union you still go show up at the next race but the sport would have to grow yeah yeah it would have to grow because feld would then go hey what's fair well guys what we think is fair is the price purse needs to move up a little bit can you show us your book you know you're making money we all want to make money by the way everybody deserves to make money that's why when someone says well i don't want to pay an agent well then i'm not your right agent because i need to make i i work for a living for fuck's sake yeah, 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 yeah. But you gotta, you gotta organize. You can't be fragmented. There's a difference between being diversified and fragmented. We are a fragmented sport right now. I don't know. I guess at the end of the day, I was open to this, and I think James Stewart's got a great. No, no sorry if I'm talking about the podcast communication, but I think he's doing a brilliant job, and he's not he afraid is, to say man. it. But I will say it, what I said to him is, is he's doing a great job. But what I would say is right now is it's like you can't. Feld has got everybody, and and again utmost respect to the Feld family. I, they paid me to run commercials for them. And I, I'm not, but I'm, I, I got no problem saying it to their face. No one is challenging them to make a change big enough. You, throwing a few new fireworks in and a DJ does not do anything. The prize purse has not changed enough. The licensing splits and shares, they would still make money and there's room to elevate. Right? I mean, I'm just telling you right now that people that were represented by me when they did have Feld deals and ones that I inherited, they do get, let's just say some of my guys have gotten double the royalty than the guy that won the championship all year, Mm. years ago. Because I asked and I said, I'm either pulling out and they said, okay, well, we have some wiggle room. You got wiggle room for everybody. It's just fair. Back to the NCAA. It's going to take that. Like now all the NIL, now college players, if you had just given college players, especially in the sport like a football, basketball, football especially, the largest sport in America, like there's not a bigger audience than college football, give them a 10% of jersey sales, give them 5% of ticket sales, you would have had enough money, you would have never had this now that you're dealing with these collectives and these under, all these crazy deals players entering the transfer pool just to see how much money they can get and all that stuff instead of worrying about winning. Yeah, instead of worrying about just right? like doing but that job. It, yeah. so, so so that's what it's going to take. So WSX, I'm hoping they're listening and the private equity guys missing it and the fund, go dump more money in and you can win because they will come. And if they don't, then that the riders are foolish, right? I mean, at some point. And are they all going to come? No, but the I'm willing to bet the right ones that can move the radar right now. Something I said to Kenny the other day is I said, unfortunate thing is if you decide to do this next year or like what you did last year, you're actually not going to see the ultimate result of this. It's the kid that's seven years old right now. Yeah. That'll benefit from the change you made, yeah. right? When Michael Jordan said, I wanted ownership or I wanted... The, all these things happen when someone finally makes a statement or says no in life, yeah. right? Ken Roxon gave me that power when I was negotiating this deal when I felt like, why does a baseball player get a guaranteed $300 million contract, gets hit in the face with a fastball? Giancarlo Stanton was our client at Wasserman. And he's still guaranteed his money even though he can't play. But a guy that's risking his life every day racing, Literally. training 365 days a year. By, by the way, does he have the time off of any other player in any other sport? I mean, these guys go year round. They get a couple weeks off a year. Couple weeks off a year, but doesn't get paid if he gets a knee blown. If it's more than a month or thirty day clause. Now, what I will say, 
because this industry is loyal. Is it's rare that that's activated, right? Guys yeah. have gotten paid when they got the blown knees, but it's not in writing. And I I had a client that let me do it. Now since then it's a little tough, right? Because guys don't have the balls to do it, maybe, or maybe mm. the agent doesn't, or whatever else. You know, Jet Lawrence can change the sport. I hope him and Lucas do. Yeah, yeah. grow a set, Lawrence, Lucas. Yeah. You can change the sport with certain guys. Yeah, no, no, I I completely agree. Um, and and it was funny to go back to that press conference. Like I said what what I said, and then instantly Joey Savacci's like, oh well, if he's getting that, and it's just like. I fucking love you, Joey. You're a really good guy. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you just don't have... I, I you, you can't... Like, you're not in this conversation right now. Like, you won tonight. You're an amazing writer. Shut the fuck up. Because if you get him here, and then you get someone else here, and they're getting paid, and you're just, like, you're not worrying about, like, your money. You're not penny pinching right now to get your deal done. If this works, and you're the guy that wins here, you win too. And there, there has to be like Brayton, Brayton and I were having a, uh, a, a chat and we're, it was on the finish line actually, like after the races and we were talking about, you know, how this thing can work and like what would it take. And I, that I basically said to him what I said in the press conference. And then he's like, dude, you're so right. And like, I shouldn't get paid that money. He's like, no one gives a fuck about me. Like I'm an old dude. Like they, people need to accept that they're going to have to pay to play. They're going to have to pay these guys to come over here and for Kenny he needs to realize that like he might get a couple good years out of it but you're, you're right like he's laying the foundation for the kids that are coming up and he's creating like the, the thing that I loved about World Supercross was that was 40 guys that had a job through the last three four months of the year and that was guys like Phil Nicoletti that they're not they're not making the crazy cash out of the sport that they should be, and they're taking the same risk. Like, not everybody should be on the same. They would pay make scale. same. So that was, and not to interrupt you, that's a Joey example. If they will get, make more money though, if this happens, a hundred percent, right? It's like everybody's asking me why. Well, why aren't all the players going to PGA? Actually, this is, and this is factual. Ken Roxon's like a Dustin Johnson. These other guys, they've already made great money in the sport. Kenny yeah, has, Eli yeah, has. Yeah. Now they can make a difference. They see that, and they're getting a shitload of money. But they also know that they're not going to win on the tour anymore that long and that sort of stuff. Roxon's very realistic to realize he's he's near the latter part of his career. He sees these kids coming up or he sees Chase and he sees he he sees all this. Right. So he's looking at it like Dustin Johnson, excuse me, and all those players. We have a young golfer on the PGA Tour. The number he's not worth what Dustin is, but the number would have to be close. Why? Because actually, and this is what I would say why Fell can benefit from this, is he's so young because the PGA Tour pays you well, he live is still a risk. Kenny can take the risk at WSX. A guy like Jet Lawrence probably can't right now because Jet no Lawrence chance. can play in this game for 20 more years, yep. right? Kenny could take the risk. So the big guys are the ones that have to go to WSX right now or Feld steps up and then there's a bidding, whatever, whatever. But like if you look at it, I look at it very different. We would have some players in the PGA Tour right now that if they came to me, I say, heck yeah, go for even less. Because they're at the latter part of their career and they're not winning, but they're big enough and Liv needs them, right? Just like WSX needs them. But like, if you're 25 years old on the tour and you can win, you got 30 years you can make money on PGA and it's not going anywhere. Liv might, remember the billionaires might get sick of wasting money. I don't know. So they might, or they might change it and just like, we're not paying anymore. So there is a bigger risk. There's no risk for Dustin. He was on yeah, the, no, no. Yeah. the swan. He can win, but he's he's on the swan song, right? I'm just using him as done I don't it all. He's done it all. No. Like, but yeah, like, no, he's done it all. Right, he's, he's got done the it money, all. Right, he's won the he's won right. majors. He's like yeah. he's ticked the boxes in that. Right. And I think right. that Kenny, right. Eli, Ando, Basha, like there's a generation of guys. Cooper Webb, yeah, Ryan Dungey, yeah, all of them could make a huge difference. Get paid what they do deserve because they will lose money by doing this, but they can afford it. And then you know high tides raise all ships. Yeah, yeah. Right? So Joey Savacci will get... And, and and by him saying that comment, I agree with you. You're not insulting him. It's no, just, no. It's just, you know, uh, yeah, there's a just... combination that looks into this. There's analytics. Sean O'Malley said it on his thing. He wasn't even the main card, but the UFC does a good job. They could tell that he helped that pay-per-view, not the main card. That's popularity. Yeah. Okay? Ken Roxon. So it, it, we're not going to go into numbers, but we all know he didn't commit to Paris to last minute, Right? Let's just say they had a lot of tickets to sell. And he got paid a number that was really good number. But guess what? He sold tickets. Yeah. 
And no offense, Joey, you're not going to sell 4,000 tickets in 24 hours or 2,000 tickets or 500 tickets. Or and I shouldn't be picking on. These are all unbelievable humans, by the way. The fact that Joey can do agree. what he's doing yeah. is incredible athlete. So, But you're not Tiger Woods. We're excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.